So we have people typing in the notes, which I mean, I assume means that you're happy to take notes. Pardon? I can't see the whole room either. This is a very room, it's a very strange room set up. Oh, is that the one with the big pillar in the middle? It is the one with the big pillar in the middle. Oh, okay. And like half the yeah. people are on one side and half the people are on the other. Oh yeah, like that one. Okay, you so see... James Grissing is uh, volunteering to take notes. <laughs> That's my assumption. Yeah. It's okay. No, I said oh, there we go. Be... Thank you very much. Yeah. Whatever you can do is great with us. <laughs> exactly, Richard. Like, if you sit in the room, you can't see everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, you off. Oh, we can start. Yep. We can. I so, think, yeah. okay. So, let's uh, do that. Um, so welcome everyone to the ACME meeting at ITF 118 and FRAG, at least for some of us. Um, there, uh, this is the note well and the bigger font, biggest font that I could fit uh, in one slide. I'm sure you've seen this many times uh, in this meeting and in previous meetings. So it all applies. Um, the most relevant parts are of course, uh, the, the ones about IPR in BCP 78 and 79. But of course, there's also the um, anti-harassment, code of conduct, all the rest of it. I'm sure you all know it. And if you don't, well, here's a slide. Uh, so our agenda for today is not very, not very long. We only have two presentations. So uh, we'll have done the note well. And this is the agenda bashing part. And uh, apparently, we don't have technical issues. And, Assuming I'm not uh, just uh, talking to myself without anybody hearing me. Don't jinx it, don't jinx it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have a document status and then we'll have two presentations, one for Acme for Onions and one for uh, Acme Auto Discovery. And if there's, time, if there's time remaining, we'll do the any other business. Any agenda bashing? Okay, because of modern technology, we don't have to have this um, blue sheets uh, going around because it's all electronic these days. If you are in the room, please uh, log in with the uh, uh, either the full client on a PC or um, the mobile client um, on your phone. So documents. Now, last time at the ITF at the ACME meeting in uh, ITF uh, 117, uh, we had up this slide, and at the time we said uh, that. Uh, it's really sad that uh, we haven't had any RFC published uh, within two years because the last one was uh, a star delegation in uh, 2021. And that made us sad because we're a working group and we're supposed to um, deliver RFCs. But we thought that it was going to be uh, different in, by the time we get uh, here. Uh, so indeed we had three um, RFCs published. Um, Acme subdomains was published as RFC 9444. Yeah, we've had a lot of luck with these uh, three repeating digits. And so thanks to Owen, Richard, team, and uh, Michael for all the work. And also the uh, two uh, drafts, uh, Acme Authority Token and Acme Authority Token TN Auth List, were published as RFC 9, uh, 9447 and 9448, respectively. So again, thanks to the authors, John, Mary, David, and Chris. And thanks to, these were stuck in the process for so long that uh, Rich Saltz was still uh, the uh, document shepherd. So that's uh, three RFCs, bringing us ACME to a total of uh, 10 RFCs. Uh, as for the rest of the documents, uh, ACME Onion got a revision last month and we've, we have a presentation soon. Um, ARI got a new revision in August. Uh, since then, there was no discussion on the list. Uh, there was a bit of discussion uh, just before it, uh, something about a, a practical concern that was sort of uh, laid to rest, and I've misspelled August. Never mind. 
Okay. Um, Acme client got a revision in August. Uh, no discussion on the list and no presentation today. DTN node ID is in uh, revision 11. It's publication requested, still stuck. Uh, according to data tracker, it's waiting for Roman. Uh, I think it's actually that... waiting for us. So he up issued that right in August. Then I think we have to coordinate with Roman a little bit and find out where we go. Yeah. Whether, whether he's going to so... make us do an, an yet another working group last call. Yeah, um, and it's been uh, in this state for 383 days. Uh, device attestation got a revision in uh, July. No discussion on the list. Acme integrations is in the RFC editors queue. Um, however, it's uh, waiting on two uh, misrefs, one from Anima, that's the Anima Bruski uh, cloud, and one from LAMPS, that's the LAMPS RFC 7030 CSR attributes. Uh, both documents are just working group documents. They're not in last call. They're not in any kind. They don't seem to be really close to uh, being finished. So uh, this, um, uh, so our, our Acme integration is uh, going to be stuck for a while in the RFC editor's queue. And account challenge, uh, no new draft and no discussion. About drafts that are not working group drafts, there's draft, uh, Van Brewer, Shaven, Acme Auto Discovery. Uh, there's a new revision from last month, and we have a presentation today. And there's a draft, uh, Giron, no, it's actually Brazilian, so draft Giron, uh, Acme PQC negotiation, uh, revision from uh, July, and I didn't see any uh, discussion or a presentation. So that's document status. Uh, any um, reaction? To update, okay, thank you. So we can move to the first presentation. That's Acme for Onion. Now, I guess Q would like me to pass the control. I'll do that. Um, you should have control now. I have control. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the state of my voice. I caught the flu last week, so uh, sound a bit awful. Uh, but yes, right, Acme for Onions. Uh, so the current state of things, the adding the already defined CA browser for methods to Acme seems uncontroversial. Uh, no one's had any objections to this all year, so I'm going to call that bit done. Uh, the bit that's the sticking point is CAA, which was a bit of a last minute addition to the first draft I wrote, and I'm now slightly regretting adding this in because this has caused, caused no end of problems and discussions, but oh well. Um, so why do, would we even want to do this? Um, this is something I, this is a question I keep having to answer, so I will answer it again in case anyone, to save anyone asking the question again. Um, it's just consistency with how every other TLD operates in web PKI um, reduces the chance of misissuance in certain circumstances, although the chance of misissuance with an onion domain is still significantly lower without CAA than for a normal DNS domain. Uh, it allows organizational policy to be enforced. Um, and it also allows an IODEF endpoint or contact details to be published which certain larger organizations may appreciate on their onion domain. Um, so the first revision just added an extra field in the Tor hidden service descriptor containing a textual encoding of the CAA records. This presented some challenges. Uh, most of these problems were raised by Let's Encrypt, but I understand other CAs had similar concerns but weren't quite as vocal about them that uh, CA needs to run a Tor client, there, there needs to be security audits for the Tor client, the Tor client may not be memory safe, it may not be something that their pipeline is set up to deploy, it's just more stuff to go wrong that they need to deal with and more stuff to think about. So this, you know, whilst the solution that was in the first version of the draft works, it doesn't, it, 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 could, be, it could be improved upon. So solution in the latest edition uh, is sending CAA over ACME. Uh, so Tor directory authorities are already untrusted in the security model of Tor. So the HS, the hidden service descriptor is verified only using the service's public key, 
So if a similar signature is sent in band in ACME, then this won't reduce the security of CAA uh, at all. So the ACME client can send its signed CAA records in the ACME exchange without exactly what I've just said. Um, and there's additionally an in-band onion CAA required uh, flag in the ACME directory uh, in case the CA, uh, CA doesn't support fetching a hidden service descriptor and requires the CAA event in-band. So there are two places that CAA could be put, in the challenge response or in the finalized call. Uh, in the challenge response, it has the advantage that it constrains all protocol modif modifications for onions to one API method, um, but then it would require modifying the response for every possible challenge that could be used. Um, and also means that a certificate must be issued within eight hours or less of uh, a challenge being responded to due to the CA browser forum requirements on CAA. Uh, in the finalized call, it will allow issuance at any time. It will allow using any validation method without modifying the response to that validation method or challenge. Um, and this is the option that I went with because it just seemed like the nicer option. So in the finalized call, in addition to the CSR, there is now a new dictionary of Onion CAA containing the uh, CAA records uh, and expiry and signature for those for each Onion domain that is in the order and the signature is computed over this um, string at the bottom with the uh, double pipes being concatenation. Uh, is this the right way to do it? This was just my first instinct for this is how you, I'm, pre I'm pretty certain this security wise is correct, but it might be a more elegant way to do it. Um, the reason for the expiry date in here is uh, that in the case of HTTP, HTTP01 or um, TLS ALPN01, then the ACME client may not be the Tor hidden service. So the Tor hidden service might want to pre-sign a set of CAAs valid for the next month or so and hand them over to the ACME client and say, when you need a new certificate, um, you can use this as the CAA. Um, but some someone did point out on the mailing list that actually that's kind of pointless because you'd have to make a connection to the Tor network anyway if you were validating HTTP01, et cetera. So you could just fetch the CAA from the hidden service descriptor. So may maybe this just needs to be signed with a server provided nonce instead of an expiry. Uh, that might be better in this case. Suggestions welcome and requested. Um, yep, so that's everything. Uh, what, what do people think on this? Because I think this, this is the one sticking point before I'm happy to say that this, this draft is done. Okay, anybody has an opinion? Nobody is leaping to the mic. Yeah. Not all at once. I assume you all just need more time to think about it and we'll respond on the mailing list. Yeah, uh, but please make sure that you, uh, well, wait for next week and then raise it as a topic on the mailing list. Uh, otherwise, yes. I mean, this is supposed to be a working group that means the group is working, not just you're working and we're looking, but uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Classically. Anyway, thank you. Oh, okay. so, oh Richard. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Richard. Yeah, yeah, sorry to disappoint. I don't have an actual opinion here. I'm just going to uh, remind the chairs that one one good way to get people to express opinions is to last call a document. So, I mean, Q, if it gets to a point you're happy with, like, like let's, let's push it forward and, and you know, get people to disagree. Well, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not quite ready to put it to last call. Uh, this work is being funded by the uh, Open Technology Fund, who have promised to do a security audit of this before it goes to RFC. Mm -hmm. So I need to do do that at some point, probably like next month or something. Um, but I, yeah, I wouldn't want to discourage you, but it takes a long time from working group last call to RFC. That's a good point. 
<laughs> Maybe we could just go for working group last call now. <laughs> Chaos mm. option. We might, yeah. It, it's Chaos. been done. Right. I, I, I would say, like, get it to a point where the authors are happy and they have confidence. Um, and and I, would, I would use that as the only case for last call. Okay. But well, I, I will say that I'm happy, <laughs> I'm happy with the document as it is, and I will leave the decision on last call to the chairs. Yeah, I so, still think that uh, this particular point uh, should be raised on the list, and then, yeah, unless the list is overwhelmingly on one side or the other, you can uh, choose, choose your own. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Right, now I so have to steal we... back the control. Right. Okay, so uh, next is uh, Acme Auto Discovery. Which is Mike. He'll be Believe, here. Which is so, Mike, and yeah, I, I can already see him. Yeah. Do you want to play games with this? We'll see if it works. I don't know what has um, to happen. Like, he's got control of it, right? So Yeah. Who should I assign it uh, to you, Deb? Let's try assigning it to me, see what happens. Okay. Um, there, you've got it. Now, I'll see if it works. Button. This microphone is awkwardly right in front of the display screen, so I just see uh, like yeah. the word Acme and then a microphone. Oh. So picky. <laughs> <laughs> see, if, see if the clicky thing works. I don't know if I have to end it here. I don't know how this works. I think we can all... just do the regular uh, next slide and. We can. Switch slides. Yeah. And Yolov can decide whether he wants to take it back or not. Right now, I have um, it. No, right now, I not have anymore. it. Not okay. anymore. have it now. Ooh, nice. Purple. Yeah, uh, my, my, my corporate spirit likes purple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I first want to ask if Richard Barnes' background is the elevators of the Prague Hotel. Are you like here, but not here? <laughs> Off topic question. All right. Um, this... I, I couldn't figure out how to get the video to work so that the elevators can go up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, this presentation is going to be a bit of a, we realized this draft was harder than we thought it was and have sort of hit some mud. Uh, but we, we, I'm presenting you why we've slowed down, but we don't really have full solutions yet. So uh, next, next slide, please. So I'll just, I'll just refresh what the problem statement is that we're trying to solve. Uh, and I'm picking on DigitalOcean here for no particular reason, except that they have a really nice screenshotable uh, example of the problem we're trying to solve. So you want to host your website on DigitalOcean. It needs a certificate. They can get one for you automatically. You don't have to worry about it. There's some Acme in the background. It says, let's use Let's Encrypt as the title of the tab. That is not a dropdown. That is not a multi-select. That is not anything that I want it to be. It's the title of a tab. Don't like Let's Encrypt? Great. You can upload a PEM file. Boo. Next slide, please. So I know there's this general trend to move towards 90-day validity web PKI certs. We can't do that while upload a PEM file is the only alternative to Let's Encrypt. Uh, People who have to manually upload PEM files four to six times a year will not appreciate this development. So we need to solve this, this aut automatability problem and fallback CAs and default CAs and preferred CAs problem in these cloud environments before we can consider the, the move to shorter 90 day or some people are talking crazy talk, 14 day certs. Yeah, this is blocking. So. When subscribers can't specify their preferred Acme server, the default becomes the norm. When the default is the norm, we lack issuer diversity, which risks becoming a single point of failure in the entire ecosystem. Also, a shameless plug here, the side benefit of this draft we're proposing allows you to prioritize your list of fallback or preferred Acme servers. So if you, your primary server fails to get a cert for some reason, or that cert suddenly gets expired or something, you can order the list of CAs that you want your cloud provider to get certs for you for. So how do we do this? How do we automate discovery of the domain owner? And in the terminology here, I'm using domain owner as in the person who owns the domain, who registered the domain, who pays the annual fees to own that domain, not the service provider who is serving that domain. So how do we automate discovery here? Next slide. 
Dun, 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 DNS, CAA. This is a bit of an abuse of CAA in that normal, like the intention of CAA is to communicate to the CA whether it is allowed to issue this cert or not. We are double using it to communicate to the Acme client, like the Acme bot, the cert bot. We're using CAA to communicate to the Acme bot which CA it should be contacting in the first place. So we, it is a bit of a semantics abuse, but we think it's all okay. Next slide, please. So here's the sort of picture I have in my head when I'm thinking about this problem. So Joe Admin owns the domain. Joe Admin is going to configure joesdomain.com in his cloud service provider UI. I'm assuming that Joe Admin also has control of his DNS. I'm aware that assumption is not always true. Often, especially for the CA record, Cloud Inc. will take control of that. So that's maybe a problem with this diagram, but I'm assuming at least that Joe has some sort of control over his own DNS record, whether it's through the Cloud Inc. UI or not. And so he can put whatever he wants in CAA. Acme bot by default, or so, sorry, the important property of Acme bot is that it is part of the Cloud Inc. infrastructure. Joe has no direct way to configure Acme bot. By default, AcmeBot is going to go to its favorite preferred default CA. What we want is to bootstrap. So the AcmeBot will look up the, the DNS record of the domain it's trying to get a cert for, figure out from there which CA it's supposed to be going to, and then go get a cert there. Seems like this should work. This seems sort of straightforward-ish enough on, on the surface. It does not require any UI changes on Cloud Inc. It does not require any dropdowns. It does not require Cloud Inc. to maintain a list of all known Acme servers everywhere. It's all sort of the Acme. You just update the code for Acme bot and this in theory should just go. Okay, refresher done. So let me explain why we've run into problems. Next, next. So we did put up a new draft. I think one or two new versions are up since San Francisco, um, which incorporates some of the feedback on the mailing list. I'm going to sort of skip over that and we can maybe do, a, I can maybe, next IETF, we can maybe go back and do a full look at the diff. But the problem that we ran into is external or internal account binding mechanisms. So the general problem here is if you assume like a commercial CA where we have to have a billing billing account to who to charge, or they've done EV validation, or this this account can issue both SMIME and TLS, or can issue, I mean anything you anything you can imagine where there's multiple cert profiles, or these humans can issue this type but not that type, but it's all the same domain. All of this gets complicated. We need to know. We're sort of calling it the account disambiguation problem. Which here's an Acme request. Which billing account, which CA account is that supposed to go against for authorization purposes? It turns out to be trickier than we expected. So sub problem one is that we can't use the Acme account for that disambiguation. The Acme account will in general be owned by the cloud service provider and the cloud service provider may either use a single Acme account key across all of their tenants. Like they may have a single pipe to the, to the Acme server in which case that's not helpful for disambiguation. Or they may just spin up fresh Acme accounts at will. And so the fresh Acme account per request, in which case also we can't use that for disambiguation. The second sub problem here is within one CA billing account. So like one credit card could have multiple subgroups of admins who are not allowed to talk to each other or not allowed to issue each other's cert profiles. So we also can't use domain the requested domain as a disambiguator. Next. So, uh, and then the third problem here, so problem zero, Acme already has this external account binding key. It's also not useful because in general, it has more, it has stronger permissions or broader permissions than I really want to delegate to my cloud service provider. My Acme account might have might be able to issue all sorts of fun and magical stuff, and I want to let Cloud Inc. issue some very small subset of it. So maybe this could be workable. Also, you need a way to pass that through the cloud, the, the cloud service provider UI down to the Acme client, which is a which is now us begging cloud service providers to make UI changes, which we don't want to get into. So we consider this, it may work in some cases, but we think it's not a general solution. Next slide. So more, a little more detail here on the 
Acme accounts are not unique for the CA. So this is that picture that the Acme bot is owned by Cloud Inc, but Cloud Inc may, is going to serve multiple customers and it may have one single pipe. So yeah, we can't, can't use that. Problem, next problem, problem one, problem two. Problem two is actually the one that really got us stuck. So here, uh, we've sort of got this case where there's, you know, widgets Inc has department A that is web server admins and that's Joe and Susan. And, and they also have department B which is email server admins and that's Sophie and Fred. And Joe and Susan should be able to request TLS certs but Sophie and Fred shouldn't, but they're all for star.widgets.com. And this unfortunately requires me to draw a picture of the CA's database model. How the CA structures its customer models somehow becomes relevant here, which is becoming really quite a mess. And this is, so I think my next slide is gonna say we need more CAs to give us input here because built, designing a, a solution here that, that works great for Entrust might not work great for some other CA that has a different customer data model. So next slide, please. So a couple solutions here. Yeah, so the external account binding that's already in Acme maybe is workable, but probably not everywhere. Internal account binding using email maybe is workable, but the security properties are a bit not great. Internal account binding using a domain validation, a DV type authorization might be workable. We've sort of started sketching out a solution there, but we're not really ready to present it. Next slide, please. So this is all a bit design ongoing. Yeah, we do. Present why we're stuck. We're not really ready to present solutions. We definitely need more vendors to get involved here to help us make sure we're designing. If we even have the, all the problems sort of understood properly. Um, for example, a fourth option that could could have gone on this slide is you put a just an account disambiguation UUID in your CCA record, and maybe that's enough to help you figure out which sub 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 account this is supposed to go to for authorization. Or maybe domain name and cert profile together is a unique disambiguator, but we really need to study the problem space more carefully to make sure that's true. So yeah, we're in the, we found a problem. We're not sure we fully understand it yet. State. Richard, I'll recognize you now if you want. I'm happy to wait till the end. Okay, perfect. I think the end is near. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide, please. Um, yeah, here's a slide. So my co-author, Paul Van Brouwershaven, is actually the one who should be presenting this, but he's also the chair of P the PKI Consortium, whose conference is uh, today. So he's not Very presenting. Very clever. Yeah, clever way to get out of presenting. Yeah, great. Um, so here's, some, here's another problem we discovered. This is unrelated to the previous slides. I'm going to basically entirely skip this, but this is another consideration we're grappling with is how to get... How, is there is there a way we can be sort of stuff into here a way to authorize which cloud service providers are allowed to request certs for me? Totally orthogonal, but I'll leave the slides here. Next. Um, so yeah, the, the summary here is this draft is slowed down. We realize there's a hard problem buried inside it. We need more iterative design design iterations on how to disambiguate which CA account a given Acme request should be associated with. Um, we may need to consider the authentication and the authorization bits of this separately. So how do I how do I identify the account? And then how does the admin for that account confirm that this is a wanted request? They need to be separate mechanisms. Um, this may need, this problem may be complicated enough that we need to form a design group, pull together all the CAs to make sure that what we're designing fits with everyone's customer data, customer object data models. And uh, that's, should be my last slide. Uh, yeah, what's 39, I'm scared. It might be the end of the. Yeah, okay. Because cool. he's got one big slide back. Yeah, perfect. So, Richard. Yeah, so that, thanks for the overview here, Mike. This is useful, like, context reset. Um, You're somehow muted. Oh. No, um, I can hear him in the room. Oh, okay. Great. Maybe you all, maybe uh, you all see, muted I'll, you individually. I'll, I'll see if this, this works well. Um, so I was just saying thanks for the helpful context reset. The, the, the web form you started with, I think, was a helpful, uh, you know, touch point, touchstone for you know, building intuition here. Um, and it, it made me realize as, as you're uh, going through this that I, I feel like where this draft may have gone astray a bit is in focusing on the DNS um, as the configuration mechanism, right? Maybe the, the, the better thought experiment is like, assume that the cloud service provider 
uh, is going to deploy some better UI that is not just, you know, choose let's encrypt with upload a pen file, but it's like fill in some parameters here to connect this cloud service provider to your preferred Acme provider. Um, you know, that you know, might be the stuff that it would pull from DNS, um, but the, the important point thing is the cloud service provider needs to know what it needs to do differently for this deployment. Um, and I'll, I'll note as well, like, regardless of what we do here, like there's an assumption that the CSP is going to do something different. So, so like presumably modifying web forms is also uh, potentially in their scope of agency. Um, now, I, I think there's probably still work to do here. Um, can, to I just, cover, can I just jump to respond to your comment? Yeah, yeah, sure. So we we sort of set out the, the restriction for ourselves. We restricted the design space at the beginning that we do not want to have to go and beg. There's like hundreds of cloud service providers in the world. We didn't want to have to go beg for UI changes that right off the top we said. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're gonna have to beg for, please go check this DNS record and reconfigure your Acme client to do the right yes, thing. Yes, anyway. but there are, there are fewer code bases of Acme clients in the world than there are code bases of web UIs for cloud service providers. Fair though, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, one could argue both ways. But anyway, setting that aside, um, it seems like the salient question here is like, what information does the CSP need to act as an Acme client on behalf of the ultimate client of the CA? So this is, I think this is at the core an on behalf of problem or a delegation problem. Um, so I think maybe the way to, to, to make progress on this is to kind of focus in on that aspect. And then we can futz around with how, how we should provide the, you know, the information that's necessary to encode the delegation um, to get the CSP the right configuration it needs. So then I guess request to chairs, should we split a design team? Is this a complex enough thing that we should start having meetings about it? Is this a working group item? I should mention that this is not yet uh, not working yet. group draft, yeah. so you, know, you can have uh, whichever um, <laughs> it's kind of structure that you yeah. like. No, we can still cut you off at the knees. Easy. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> sorry. Stay away from my knees. <laughs> yeah, it's not, a, it's not a working group job yet, Richard. Uh, yeah, and we were supposed to make a call for adoption and we never did it. So good that you found the hard problem. Um, yeah, I do, I do think more thought is required here, right? I think, but we have more people in the queue other than just Richard. So maybe we let them say their piece. I'm taking Richard out of the queue. Queue? Queue's in the queue. Yep. Um, not much to say, just that uh, I kind of agree with what Richard was saying, but asking a cloud provider to make changes to their Acme client and asking the cloud provider to please update their UI is kind of in the same ballpark of really annoying. <laughs> I, so I, I understand, yeah, it would be slightly easier if like CertBot was just updated and then this magically happened on some, you know, this cloud provider just does sudo app get update cert bot or whatever. Um, and then this happens. But I feel like if it was that simple for it to happen, then I wouldn't want it to be that simple to happen. I think there should be some active part on the cloud provider to be like, yes, we do actually want this. Like, we do want to be randomly getting certificates from random CAs. Um, so I think the, it, it, the, the question of asking a CA, a, a cloud provider, not CA, uh, to update their UI and to update their Acme client is kind of the same. And maybe we should spend a bit more time on looking at what options could we do to make the UI update as slick as possible. Someone mentioned in the chat AWARF. Um, that might be an option. I, I mean, I know AWARF is tedious at the best of times, but you know, it seems like something that could work. Yeah. Tim. Ah, thank you. I was trying to be polite and wait. Uh, uh, Tim Holbeek, Digicert. Um, I'm scratching my head a little bit at the people who think that uh, getting all of the uh, cloud service providers to update uh, their UIs 
is actually easier or desirable. I, I, the Acme client distribution is actually pretty small relative to them. So at least from our point of view, it seems much more sensible to do something along the lines of this work. Um, I do think it's perhaps some of the problems are coming from, and this is not really a, a criticism, but just uh, where we are in the design space. Uh, we're at the point where we're considering all the possible options. And I think perhaps things are getting a little bit too complicated. Uh, and so I'm, I would like you to remind me uh, exactly why a lot of these problems uh, can't be fixed relatively easy just by make, making the uh, current uh, widely used idea of putting parameters in CAA for accounts and just extending that to be a little bit smarter so that you have additional information so that it's not just per domain, but it could also be per profile so that you know you could have account equals X and you know, because we're already have to do stuff. It's not random CAAs. We already have CAA records that specify which CAAs are actually involved in this. And we could extend that with other options saying, oh, this is uh, let's encrypt issuing email certificates for this particular domain and that's account X. This is let's encrypt issuing email, uh, issuing TLS certificates for this domain and that's account Y and just make the CAA side of it in the DNS configuration a little bit more complicated. And that gives more information to the Acme client that can, can you know, Acme clients that want to have this flexibility uh, can implement it. Part of the advantage of doing it in the Acme client is the Acme client is a little bit more under the control of the customer. And the customer is the one who's actually getting the benefit of this functionality and they're more likely to adopt it. Acme clients that have this functionality would be more popular among clients. Whereas the cloud service provider generally is in the business of offering a very low cost, low friction uh, access to websites. And if you try to have these UI discussions with them, we're just not gonna do it because it's just not feasible. So yeah, I think you're referring to the CAA comment. You're referring to the Acme account URI, which is already a something notionally similar to that, right? Yeah, or, or even actually that. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I, I I'm really here to say we found a problem and then got busy with other things and haven't proposed good solutions to it. But like this, yes, pl yes, please. Yeah. No, if you're solutions. forming an informal design team, sign us up. Hi, Greg Chules, ISC. Um, I was just thinking about potential ways in which you could do this. I mean, if you were wanting to use the CAA record, it's possible for a domain to have multiple of them. I think just following a very similar theme there, you know, you can convey a lot more information in a CAA request than just one thing. Uh, or there's another group active here this week, uh, which is the domain control validation. So they're trying to standard how you validate that a domain is actually yours. And that looks like a very extensible mechanism that they've proposed. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to need to go beyond domain validation. If you consider QX or you consider EVs, or you, I mean, we need a tighter binding than just EV. But uh, yeah, there, there might be all sorts of information that you could contact, that you could convey in in an ADNS request and, and get back in that response yeah. that might allow you to do what you need to do. Yeah, I think the question we're stuck on is what information needs to be conveyed. Right. We need the CAs to weigh in and say, my account. My account, my my database accounts look like this. I need three layers of sub key. Like we just need sort of what information needs to be in a DNS record so we can uniquely identify an account. Okay. I think it's sort of where we're at. Yeah. How to convey it? Probably CAA, Acme account URI or something is the right way to do it. But but also please, I mean, please mailing list with suggestions. So if the queue is empty. And the queue is empty. Then yeah, question to chairs. What do you want to do with this work of ours? Yeah, as pointed out, it's not adopted yet. So I think you need a little more work to do before we ask for a working group adoption. If you want to go to the list and see if you can't get CAs together to talk about what the best options are. I do agree that it's going to be easier to work with the Acme client than it is to work with the cloud provider. <laughs> Um, who are probably not interested in talking to you. Um, you can't even find them all. It, well, you can't find them all. That's the problem. Uh, Richard's not in a queue, but well, he's just, gotten his video on. Yeah, I just want to leap in there and emphasize a point that, that Q made, which is that this is not purely a technical issue either. Even if you fix the Acme clients, um, it's not clear that the CSPs are going to be willing to like go out and talk to random Acme providers uh, just because the DNS told them to. So I, th I think there, there are some slightly deeper issues here 
um, as well. Yeah, I think there's lots of security issues. I mean, you talk about putting things in DNS like that, and but it's not always great, honestly. Um, so I, I do think there's more work that needs to be that needs to be done. Um, whether you do it on your own or whether you do it in conjunction with other CAs, I'm fine with that. Um, How far do we have to get before Acme Working Group sort of says, yes, we should spend time on this as a working group? Just some sort of at least reasonable path forward that you're happy with um, or halfway happy with. Like you're not happy with it at all at this point, right? I mean, you We're need to be... With most of it, I think, is the account biting part. <laughs> yeah, you need yeah. to be a little right, happier fine. with it. Sorry, it's not very like concrete, but um, at least a little, a little, a little closer to what you think a reasonable path forward is. Yeah, and especially if like Richard's going to challenge using DNS in the first place, then that's a yeah. Uh, a yeah, he already has. So um, you don't see the chat. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's sort of where we are. I think a little more work to be done is is okay. Is that fair? I don't. I mean, I don't really want to take a vote for about a, a raising hands or whatever we call that here. Does that sound good, Yoav? Mm, yeah, I think so. We could have a kind of a poll if people think it's uh, ready, but I think most people think it's not ready for adoption. It could be next time. It's not. Drafts that get adopted do get worked on and change a lot when they're while they're in the working group process. But that's um, it's just that we're not really sure what we're uh, what we'd be voting on. I mean, is this like uh, are we doing uh, DNS or are we doing OAuth? I mean, that's kind of all over the place. So uh, when we have a good direction, then we can say, oh, okay, yeah, maybe we can work on that and then change everything inside it. I think we'd rather be sure it was a good idea, right? Before we start adopting it as a working group item. Like I'm fine with having things change, but let's make sure it's really a solid idea before we do that. Like we don't want a working group item that we later abandon because it was never a good idea anyway. Fair? Okay, awesome, thank you. One more slide. And I think you have control. Oh, I do? What? What did that happen? Look at that. OK. Any other business? Do it. Stand up. I, I know we do have any other business, so. Bob Beck, Google. Um, just wanted to call attention if anybody wasn't at uh, TLS. We have a draft we're working on for TLS trust extensions, which is somewhat sizable. Uh, it includes, we are using the lovely parts of Acme that allow you to use specify alternate chains with multiple links in the response. And that's a partial solution for what we're looking at. And we recognize that there's probably future work to go on in Acme there. And just wanted to say hello. And if anybody's interested in things that might return multiple certificate chains in Acme, we'd love to talk to you and love to have you play along in future. Thank you. Thank you. And if there's nothing and no one else, I guess we're getting a quarter of an hour back. OK. Thank you all. Thank See you. you next time. Next time. Bye.
Yeah, but basically they were a Turkish local Thank you. delegated reseller uh, that I forget who's actually signing for, but so that you've got an account that actually isn't from the issuing active domain, it's a different TV account. They're doing the domain validation and then 